Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. This is just a quick way to actually get to the options, to, to the strategy that I want to talk about. And let's pull the trade case playbook, which, by the way, I just wrote the new version of the options playbook, and it's going to be on Amazon next week. And let's look at a long straddle. Okay. So this is a long straddle. It basically means we're going to go in, we're going to pick two option contracts that are fairly close to where the underlying is trading at. We're going to buy a call. The stock is at strike A, right at the middle. We're going to buy a call at strike A, and we're going to buy a put at strike A. Our outlook in this situation is, is we want the market to move a lot. And when might a lot of people go out and, and do this? When would they might do the strategy or expect a lot of movement? Well, the answer is simple. It's, a, it's around an event. A lot of people like to think about straddles when there's an earnings event, phase two trials, for some particular reason like that. And around that event, they like to buy this because, oh, gee, Google's going to announce earnings. I don't know where it's going to go, but I know that when it does, it's going to move. So a long straddle is uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting trade to do around a type of event, but you've got to be very careful with it, and you've got to understand the dynamics of the trade. So if I were to do a long straddle, my question to you is, how far out in time should we go? All right? We've already looked at the rate of time decay, right? So how far do you think it should move as we go out further and further in time? I'm, so, I'm sorry. What, what's a good time period to do a long straddle? You're buying two option contracts. And actually, if you want to type in your answers in the Q&A, let's see what, what we come up with. I'm just very curious what you think would be the right time frame to go out and, and, and do these uh, long straddles. Should you do them in with one week to expiration? Should you do them with three months to expiration? What's the, what's the proper time frame? Uh, Addison says as close as possible. Zachary says three months. All right, so we already got a huge discrepancy. I'll wait to see if we get anybody else. All right, nobody else wants to play in the Ranger games. But these are great answers. So, Zachary, let's take your answer and think about this going out three months in time. I can understand why you would say that. And then I'll address Addison's answer that goes as much as, uh, as close as possible. If we go out and you look at three months in time and we go back to the PowerPoint, right, let's pull up the PowerPoint. And... What, we're, what I think Zachary is saying is that if you're going to do a long straddle, you're going to pay, oops, <laughs> you're going to pay for this trade, and you're going to be buying a lot of time premium. So as I go further and further out in time, uh, and I'm at the three-month period, I'm paying $1.73, but when that goes down, we only lose $0.32 cents on our option contract. So even if I don't go and I buy this long straddle, and the stock doesn't move, I don't have as much susceptibility to time decay. All right. Granted, that makes a lot of sense. But when you're looking for a, an option strategy to help you out, right, like that, that you really want the stock to move, what is the Greek that is really driving this strategy? And where does that Greek occur? We're worried about time decay, but the event's in two weeks' time, right? Let's say that the marketplace is uh, expecting earnings or a phase two trial on a pharmaceutical or a phase three trial. But bottom line is, is we know that, it, that the event's going to happen in three weeks or two weeks. I'm going to probably be out of that trade after that event happens. So time decay, yes, it is a, a worrisome issue, but I also know that I'm, after this is done, I'm going to get out. So it's a manageable issue. But think about this. If I buy this long straddle and I go that far out in time, what am I sacrificing by going that far out in time? What am I sacrificing? 
Think about that. The answer is I'm sacrificing gamma. I'm sacrificing this explosive growth of the near-term option contract. And remember, when I buy longer-term options and I'm buying a put and a call, for every dollar that it goes up, I make on the call, but I'm losing some value on the put. So they battle each other the whole way. So for example, the stock goes up one, and my 60-day option contract, and let's say we'll just use 60 days for the example, Zachary was talking about three months. But that 60-day option contract, when that goes up, yeah, my call, yay, I'm right, the stock went from 50 to 51, it's going up <coughs> after the earnings. All right, my first call movement, I made 50 cents on the call, I lost 50 cents on the put. The next movement, now remember, because the puts and calls are going to be uh, uh, equal to each other because we're both at the money. Stock goes now up to 52 in that instance. All right, my delta is now at 60, but I'm still losing money on the put, but I'm only made 60 cents on the next point movement. It goes up again. Now delta gamma actually gets smaller, and delta starts moving slower. So the next point movement, because we're starting to get deeper and deeper in the money, as we mentioned, gamma gets smaller and smaller. So now, now the stock only goes up five, or the option delta only goes up five cents, and it's going to take three, four, or maybe even five points before we get that delta to one, where I'm getting a one-to-one -one movement on the underlying stock and the option contract. <clears throat> and remember, I need a big swing in order for this to work out. Now, if I go up further in time, yes, I get this really nice little decay factor, but that's not the, what's driving my strategy. I need movement. So when I am doing long straddles and I know that there's an event, I would normally go out a little shorter in time. As a, Ideally, I would even like to do them in the last week to expiration, right here. Why is that? Because I have to realize that the Greek that is driving my strategy is not theta. And what I really like to do when I do long straddles is to figure out the event, look at what it's trading for. If it's trading in the last week to expiration, I want it to be right at the money and say, gee, the, I can buy the call for a buck, I can buy a put for the buck. Do I think the stock will move too? I might even go back and look at the last two or three earnings and say, has it moved to previously? Take on the overall market conditions, and maybe, well, gee, the VIX is trading up around 40. Uh, this option straddle is trading for two, maybe $3. Do I think that this thing will move? And if the answer is yes, I think it will make that type of movement, then I do a straddle as an all or none situation. I'm not a big opponent, proponent of, of straddles in that they're tough trades to do. And I talk about this in my implied volatility forecast, which I actually did a little bit while back in that the, the option contract normally will trade uh, for uh, around a one standard, e well, I don't know if I want to go down that road, but bottom line is, is the straddle will normally trade for what the marketplace expects the move to be. So when you're saying this, you're saying, I'm expecting the market to move more than what the marketplace is expecting. But if I do the near-term option, I know that when it makes that move, instantly, if I'm right on the call side, that delta is going to go to one very fast. Or if I'm on the put side on that, my, my delta would be negative, and it will go to negative one very fast, which means that every time the market goes down, I make one. It would go up one. That's why it would be considered negative. All right. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.